Hello, it's the ghost. Welcome to A Stranger World Than Fiction, where we are taking a look at what's all going on out there. The oddities, the strange that others are claiming to be true. And since we seem to be on an alien UFO kick, I thought I'd throw in another one. Like Stella Lansing, these are more encounters by an individual that did not go unnoticed, this time in Canada. We're talking about the strange and unusual here on Stranger World. Let's listen to this post about Stefan Mahalik, one man in Canada who claims to have seen it all. All right, so here is a share by How and Why titled Stefan Mihalik. Alien craft encounter is the most credible documented UFO case in Canada. March 17th, 2021. Very recent. Do you know that Manitoba, Canada has the highest number of UFO sightings in the past 200 years? According to a 2015 poll, over 2,000 UFO sightings have been recorded. Among these sightings, Stefan Mihalik's case is the most discussed UFO encounter that happened in 1967 near famous Falcon Lake in the Canadian province of Manitoba. Not only are we talking about seeing an extraterrestrial flying craft, but also about a contact made between the victim and the craft that resulted in serious burns. On May 20th, 1967, 51-year-old Stefan Mihalik, an industrial mechanic and amateur geologist, left his motel at around 5.30 in the morning and went to Falcon Lake to prospect for the quartz rocks. Suddenly, his attention was attracted by two oval objects appearing in the sky with reddish glowing. He noticed the objects coming down at great speed towards the ground, but one of them hovered and stopped in the air, while the other one continued descending and landed about 50 meters from it. After some time, the UFO that was in the air changed its color from red to gray and flew away to the west. The object that landed near it also glowed gray at first and then changed to a color similar to hot stainless steel surrounded by a golden-hued glow. An encounter. Mihalik's mind was full of curiosity, but at the same time, he was scared. For 30 minutes, he was standing near the rock where he was examining quartz formation and drew a sketch of the saucer-shaped object. According to him, the UFO was 12 meters in diameter and 4.5 meters in height. Anyway, He decided to check it closely. As he approached 60 feet from the object, not only he heard the hum and the smell of sulfur, but he also heard two human-like voices emanating from the hatch at the bottom of the UFO, which looked like a door. At first, he thought that the object was an American experimental test vehicle. So he sarcastically said, Okay, Yankee boys, having trouble? Come on out and we'll see what we can do about it. Having received no answer, he tried greeting in different languages, but still no response. Therefore, without any second thought, he put his head into the half-open hatch and saw something like a dashboard and a huge number of glowing lights. As Mihalik was examining quartz rocks, fortunately he was wearing safety goggles so that the brighter light could not blind him. But then the hatch suddenly closed again, and he quickly recoiled not to be pinched, At the same time, he touched the outer surface of the mysterious spaceship, which burned his glove. So received a burn on his hand. Next, the craft changed its position, and a grid-light exhaust vent was facing toward him. A hot, gaseous substance was thrown out of it in his direction. His clothes immediately caught fire, and only with great difficulty, he managed to extinguish the fire. The UFO flew into the air and disappeared, leaving Mahalik alone with severe pain and nausea. Quote, I am not so close-minded that I can't entertain the possibility that it's otherworldly. I can't discount that. But without specific evidence to show me that it is, I don't know. What I can tell you is that I'm an aviation fanatic, a huge aviation buff, and I'm very familiar with how aviation technology has advanced in the past 50 years. And there was nothing even close to that in the works, anywhere 
at that time. End quote, Mihalik said. Aftermath of the encounter. During a subsequent medical examination, doctors found burns on his chest in the form of a mesh pattern, which fully corresponded to his story. In the following months, he had to contend with health problems such as loss of appetite, weight loss, swelling, and fainting. Mihalik died in 1999 at the age of 83. Stefan Mihalik and his alleged encounter with the alien craft at Lake Falcon has been the subject of a big research and Canadian UFO researcher Chris Rakowski, who co-authored the book When They Appeared with him, spent many years studying and collecting countless documents, statements, photographs, and personal belongings of Mihalik. Rakowski told the reporters that Mihalik had been treated at the Miseria Cordia Hospital, where he was examined by doctors for the first time. Then he was transferred to the Mayo Clinic. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Royal Canadian Air Force, who were also investigating, admitted that they had no explanation for what had happened. During the investigation, Mahalik's welding gloves and shirt were examined, but nothing could be found in the analysis. A circle of 4.5 meters left at the landing site and area was declared radioactive. More than 50 years after the incident, Rakowski transferred all documents and items related to this case to the archives of the University of of Manitoba. And there you have it, Stefan. Okay, unlike Stella, I'm a little bit more in the middle on this one. There is reality in this claim, however, there are also things that rub me the wrong way. And sometimes, and this is just how it goes for me, if I don't know enough about the subject, enough about the details being shared, and things like that, sometimes I have to go with my instinct or my intuition. More casual terms, I go with my gut. With this story, my gut is telling me that I just can't be sure on this one. I think my skepticism, at least partly, stems from Stefan himself. And hey quick, just a side note, that's why a channel like this and people like you are so amazing because, and I want to point this out, we can share our opinions and actually learn from each other and how differently we feel. And instead of arguing over it, we have an opportunity to be open-minded to the fact that, hey, this guy over here believes one thing when I believe something totally different. So much of what we can take in as truth, as compared to what we're defensive on as untruths, depends on our own individual life experiences, what we've seen and who we have become. So it's great. Anyways, Back to Stefan. The drawing he did is great, but we really didn't learn anything. The fact that he was 60 feet away from this thing, heard voices, I mean, that part's great, but then he thinks, hey, they're Yankees, and he walks right up to it, expecting to find some men or something. He lost me there for sure. I don't think you'd not notice a giant flying saucer that might have voices of some other kind inside. Not sure I'd be calling out to the Yankees and going up to see how they're doing right away. All right, then you have him in bed with the grid lines. Again, something happened to him. So this part could be believable. But to me, if I'm trying to prove to the world in a photograph that I am hurt and that I have evidence from an alien craft that burnt these marks on my stomach, there's no doubt I would be holding up a newspaper maybe to show the date. I might have the hospital staff stand with me to show that I am legitimate. But here we just see him in messy clothes, in a messy bed. Could it all be true? Sure. But it left too much doubt for me. I will say, though, something might have happened to this person, or maybe they heard something from someone about something that happened. I'm not here to say that nothing happened at all. All I'm here to say is that in my opinion, I don't take the statements of this stuff to be fully truthful. And I don't find his evidence, what he shared with us anyways, to be credible enough. And that's where I stand. Where do you guys stand? 
This is a great one to put up just after Stella because they are similar, yet there are differences. And I'm really curious to see how you guys feel about it. I mean, does anyone else get the same feelings I do about this? How many of you think that maybe the judgment that I gave could be too quick? And remember, before you make your final decision, we can scour the internet and try to find anything we can say about Stefan. But we here on this channel, we're basing our thoughts on these individual shares by different people and groups without the luxury of searching and scouring every single detail, you know, about a so-called Stefan Mihalik or his topic. This share should have given us everything we needed to convince us. It does seem that that's what its point was. Read this and believe. But what do you think? Based on this share alone, if this were a real and true encounter, do you think that they gave us enough to go on? They did give us quite a bit. How would you have done it differently if it were you that had an encounter like this? Let me know. And thank you for listening today, and I will talk to you all soon.